Hi, my name is Matthew Reed from How to Repair Pendulum Clocks, and today we're going to be looking at a traditional work holding technique called the boxwood chuck. Now, the boxwood chuck is incredibly useful in clock repair and in clock making where you want to hold work concentric, but that work might be something like a wheel, an escape wheel, or in this case, a barrel, where there are teeth on the periphery of the work, therefore those teeth are easily damaged. The boxwood chuck is named after this material here, a piece of boxwood, but we don't have to use this. In fact, today I'm going to be using a piece of well-seasoned hardwood. Any tight grained wood will probably do. Uh, you could also use MDF, plywood maybe, or some kinds of plastics. Now what I must say is that when turning wood, make sure you use appropriate PPE, personal protective equipment, and extraction so you don't inhale the dust, as well as your eye protection of course. So as an example of this work holding technique, I'm going to bush a barrel. And this is a particularly useful example because we must hold the barrel by the great wheel teeth. We have no other uh, sort of reference point for concentricity. Also, particularly when we're bushing the barrel cap, which has to be fitted on the barrel body when we're doing it, the boxwood chuck allows us to bore that bush uh, in the barrel cap and in the barrel body uh, perpendicular with the plane of the great wheel teeth. When you use a boxwood chuck, it doesn't give you particularly strong work holding, so your cuts must be in compression, your tooling must be sharp, you've got to take light cuts, and things uh, like drilling, for instance, use uh, a drill that has been relieved for drilling brass, or one with a low helix angle specifically for the job. So here we have a sketch of the section of the boxwood chuck, uh, on the left and then a uh, yellow coloured disc of material that the chuck is holding. So the principle is that the wood or plastic or whatever you use is held tightly in the jaws of a three or four jaw lathe chuck typically and you leave the work holding there. So working from the centre line out there's a drilled hole for clearance. You might want to actually drill this the whole way through. There's uh, then a turned recess again for clearance. The flat section against which the work sits and then finally there's an angled undercut and if we look more closely at that undercut um, we can see it's important because otherwise when you push the work into the chuck a small amount of that material would gather up on the face of the work and it wouldn't say and it wouldn't sit flat if it weren't for that uh, undercut. Now here's um, a schematic of the way that I make that angled undercut with a lathe tool and the angle A here in the sketch uh, is somewhere between about two and four degrees typically. Obviously the steeper that angle the uh, easier it is to get the work to fit but the shallower the angle the greater the wedging action so you need to experiment a bit. And here's the actual chuck that I used and I'm pointing here to the, uh, the angled undercut. I then make a drawing of the barrel, critical dimensions, barrel arbor and estimate how much end shake I need. So I set the piece of wood that we're going to use as our work holding in the jaws of the four jaw chuck. I then face off the wood to make it flat I drill a hole for clearance and then begin to make the clearance recess. Once I've done that and the recess is slightly undersized, We then uh, set the lathe cross slide to our uh, wedging angle which is between 2 and 4 degrees. I begin to turn the undercut wedging angle, uh, stopping the lathe and trying the work repeatedly.
until it's a good fit. Using the boring tool I then bore out the barrel body bush uh, by about one millimeter wall thickness. If the bush extends within the barrel it's useful to leave a little bit there as a kind of guide for height. I'm going to use uh, cast brass for the bush here. You can use something like CZ131, although I would uh, anneal that first in order to make it rivet a little bit easier. I've made this a slight taper and parting it off about a millimetre to a millimetre and a half over length. The brass, or this cast brass at least, compresses quite remarkably when you rivet it. I'm going to use a slightly domed uh, stake to rivet. I actually rivet from both sides, although I don't uh, show it here, until the plug is firmly riveted in the barrel. Make sure you don't rivet so hard that it actually distorts the grey wheel. So the barrel goes back in the boxwood chuck, the centre drill, then taking Light cuts, and then drill, from this stage I should have probably uh, gone straight to boring but I decided to use this bigger drill which is a bit risky um, but then I bore out until the hole is slightly undersized for the barrel arbor. Just checking for the height of the turned bush within the barrel to make sure I've got the correct amount of end shake, which wants to be pretty small, less than half a millimetre. So just to finish to size, I'm using a clockmaker's brooch, five-sided tapered brooch, and I'll brooch from both directions, just trying the barrel arbor in the hole. You can see I've yet to finish the bush on the outside of the barrel, I'll do that later. So I've tried the arbor, a little bit of end shake, now I'm going to just chamfer on the inside and then finish the bearing with a bit of uh, steel wool on some pegwood, just to deburr and slightly burnish the, uh, the bearing surface. And it's exactly the same process for the barrel cap. The barrel cap has to be machined or particularly the final boring when it's on the barrel body otherwise you've got no um, guarantee that it's going to be uh, concentric or axial with the arbor. Again I turn a very slightly tapered bush or plug should I say making sure it's a good fit part off about a millimetre too long on both sides, so that's two millimetres altogether over length. And before I rivet the plug into the barrel cap, I use uh, the same clockmaker's brooch, not to make the hole bigger, but to raise some uh, little burrs inside the uh, inside the cap because the bearing's thin. Um, I have also chamfered this. You don't want the bush to or the plug, sorry, to turn round inside the cap when you're doing the machining. So those little kind of um, marks just help it uh, prevent it from rotating. So again, rivet from both sides, um, bearing in mind again not to distort the barrel cap. Once the plug is riveted in, same process, I centre drill, drill, and again, um, maybe I would uh, advise you to bore only after drilling with a small drill, otherwise it's likely to grab and pull the work out of the choke process. I bore uh, very slightly undersized. You don't want to bore to size because the finish from the boring tool isn't um, really good enough with the barrel cap on the barrel body. Again, we brooch from both directions 
to bring to size and then I finish on both sides with four knots steel wool you can see I've turned the bush here but left it slightly over length it doesn't need to be right up against the barrel and you can see here that our great wheel teeth are now running concentric Uh, so there we are. I hope that was a useful demonstration of an historic clock making technique. In addition to the uh, barrel holding process that we used for boring bushes concentric, you can obviously use this for boring wheels when recolleting, and I've used larger pieces of material, typically plywood, for new making projects like holding uh, clock bezels and so on. So as always, uh, take care when using machine tools and experiment first on clocks that you own. Thank you.